YouTube, what is going on? It is your boy Ron Real, aka Double R, back in the building, back with another video, back with another banger. Today we do have a very, very special treat. We're gonna be smoking one of the most prestigious cigars in the whole world, especially from Cuba. Today we're gonna to be smoking the Bahike BHK 52. So y'all hang tight, stay tuned, and y'all know what's coming next. All right, today we're gonna to be doing the official review for the Bahike BHK 52. This comes in three different sizes. Today I have the 52, there is a 54, and there also is a 56. I mean, if you're a cigar smoker, definitely if you're a Cuban cigar smoker, anybody, that's, anybody that knows about cigars has often heard about a Bahike cigar. It won cigar, the Bahike 52 won cigar of the year for Cigar Aficionado in 2010. This is probably the most highly regarded, most sought after cigar in the world, definitely as far as Cubans. I'm very, very privileged to be able to have this cigar today and I wanna give a huge shout out to my perfecto brother, Don. Without him, this wouldn't be possible. Very, very hard to come by. Even my buddy over in um, Serbia that I was telling you guys I get Cubans from, they're rarely ever in stock and when he does have it, they come in boxes of 10 and the Bahike 52 is 599 euros, which comes out to around 670-ish American dollars, that's even before shipping. So when you're looking at shipping, you're right at $700 for 10 cigars. And he doesn't sell singles. A lot of places won't sell singles. They'll only sell them in boxes. So that's a very, very big commitment for 10 cigars, but they rave about these things. So this is my first ever Bahike that I'll ever get the chance to smoke. So Don, I really, really appreciate this, man. This is huge to me. So also I'll be doing an unofficial pairing today with some water, so. But uh, I, I thought about doing a, a pairing with the Spirit, but I also wanted to, to just give a, a straight up true review to the Bahike and, and kind of give it its own shine. So ultimately I decided to not put any Spirit with this. So we'll just smoke it from here. As I'm uh, looking at this, it has that distinctive Cuban smell that you smell. Just It smells amazing. It's just a very nice looking cigar. It's just very neat, very well put together. You could just tell, that this, you could just tell from looking at it that a lot of these aren't produced, man. They're very meticulous with how they do this. You know, the, the seams are very tight and visible. There are some veins present, not really toothy at all. And then you have the, the, uh, the pigtail that comes on these as well too. So the pigtail will be on all Bahikes. There are some special edition Cohibas, but most notably all Trinidad, all Cuban Trinidads have pigtails. I just like the look of them, man. They just, they just give a different character to them. I just, they're really nice. But there, this thing has a, um, like a Colorado shade wrapper. It's just very, very nice looking. This band, if you know official bands, you can just tell like this is an official band. The holograms are all correct. The squares, everything is in check. There's nothing crooked. All of the font size and everything is very neat. You're able to touch the Cohiba signs. The Bihike is, is the, the uh, Taino head is, um, is correct too. None of the squares are touching the head. You can just tell this is a, a lovely, lovely looking cigar. Now, speaking on that too, we'll get into a little history. Unofficially, I believe Bahikes were first brought around like 2006, 2007. It was a very, very small size run. But then officially they came out in 2010 and they do produce them every year, but it's in very, very small quantities. And again, they're very, very expensive. They are very meticulous in the way that they uh, go about putting their bands and their, their packaging together to try to prevent counterfeiting because this is easily probably the most counterfeited cigar that there is. A little more background history. People often refer to refer to this as like a girl head or whatever, but it's actually a, a, a image of a, a, a member of a Taino tribe which I'm probably chopping it or messing it up with the Southern accent, but the Taino tribe was indigenous to Cuba, Haiti, Dominican Republic, just the Caribbean area. That's where the Taino tribe came from. And the word Cohiba means tobacco in the Taino tribe. And Bahike was actually a doctor or a uh, chieftain of that tribe too. So that's where you get the background story. That's how everything ties in together. It's all from the Taino tribe of, or the, the people, of the Taino uh, people, so. Just a little quick background on that too. But with that being said, we're not gonna wait any further. We're gonna cut it up, light it and smoke it. 
Now, I do have my um, cutter with me, but with these pigtails, especially with these Cubans, you should be able to just wet it up and just pull the cap and go from there. So, we will see. No tannins or no ammonia taste coming off, which lets me know that this is good. Didn't, didn't pull too much off of it. If the draw is snug, I'll just go ahead and cut it. I'm a, I'm a roll with it. It's a little on the tight side, but I'm a roll with it. I think we might be able to work with it. We'll see. As I was saying, uh, Oogie sells the Behike 52s for $5.99. The 54s are $6.99, and the 56 ring gauges are $7.99. These, that is just, I don't know, it's crazy, man. Just hard to, uh, for me to commit to that much for 10 cigars. I don't know. It's just... But hey, some, some people got it like that, man. I don't. This is obviously a 52 ring gauge cigar and it's uh, in length it measures four and three quarters. I'm so used to the longer matches now, it's kind of weird. I'll say, I'll credit this to operator error. I'm not gonna say anything else. This, this, is, this is all me. That tea flavor, like the soft mineral flavor immediately hits you. <clears throat> Again, it's one of them things, when you smoke Cuban cigars, you can just taste it right away. Like. Uh, like Dominican tobacco has its own taste and Nicaraguan like if you taste puros from the region you, they just each have their own particular taste and Cubans are no different like there's just a tea flavor that I love it's, it's already present so one little area that's not one to burn I'm gonna mess with it before it gets too late like right, I so said I'm not gonna fault the cigar on this is probably operator era man good draw man it's crazy how good some of these took it's just crazy how good some of these cigars taste man like I can only imagine I, now I think Don told me <clears throat> these were from 2018, so I mean they're they're a year old. But I can only imagine how like how a five or six year old Bahike would taste like if it was just aged properly. Now I'm I'm starting to dabble in Cubans more too. I think I have a better chance now that I'm buying more of them with them lasting and being able to age more. But I just like smoking things so much, and I'm just so accustomed to smoking good. Like I'll smoke uh, my good cigars. I know a lot of people will hold off on them and smoke for special occasions. So. Me trying to age Cuban cigars is gonna be a task, but hey, I'm gonna I'm try it. So I'm gonna get through this uh, first third, man, and uh, let you guys know flavor, strength, things like that. So y'all hang tight, stay tuned. I'll catch you in the second third. All right, about 30 minutes in. It's going pretty good. Um, first third, I was a little worried at first. It was starting, starting to look like it wanted to canoe, so I I didn't touch it up until just recently that you can see this little black mark there. It was just a loose piece of leaf that I just kind of hit to touch up to try to get it to catch up. But it, it started correcting itself. So I was like, all right, thank, thank goodness. It's, it, uh, it salvaged some points there. Actually, for as small as the opening that I pulled off with the pigtail, the draw is actually very good on this cigar. But where this cigar shines, though, is flavor and complexity. It's, it's, it's been changing a lot and it's very good. In the very beginning, I was getting that tea flavor that you guys know I always talk about I like. There was a very prevalent cedar flavor that's very, it was very good too, a, a soft cream. And then the cedar kind of went to the back in the second, third. And then there was more like coffee notes, like dark coffee, milk chocolate kind of came in. Very, very tasty cigar. And it's, and it's changed and everything is, you know, what flavor is, is, you know, more dominant or what's more pronounced is changing. So that's very good. So very high remarks for the complexity, very high marks for the flavor, very high marks for the draw. The burn is just, the burn's not, it's not a Padron burn, but honestly, I still can't complain. I just barely touched it up just to get that little loose piece of leaf. Um, another thing I forgot to mention earlier too was this cigar also has a medio or medi, I'm going to chop this up, man. My accent and how I pronounce stuff is all fucked up, but the medio tiempo leaf is also in the Bihike lineup as well too. And those are the two leaves at the very most top part of the tobacco plant. They're said to be the, the strongest and the most flavorful. That's what's getting, those two leaves get the most sunlight of any leaves on the plant. And so in the Bihike blend, they scatter that medio, uh, medio tempo out throughout it. And um, it's been very, very good. I have no complaints at all. As far as the body of it, I would say right now, the flavor or the body is probably a good medium. The flavors are probably medium to full, still on the low side of medium. And the strength is probably a medium too. I've heard people talk about Medio Tiempo being stronger than Lijero Tobacco or, you know, there's some controversy about this. That's not the case, man. Like I, I smoke enough of both, you know, because there's a cigar I reviewed that I'll probably link in the description of the Aga Norsa Signature Selection that also has Medio Tiempo in it too. 
very good cigar but they're that's not stronger than Ligero man I don't know I, again I know this stuff is all subjective but there I mean to me it's not even close like Ligero is way stronger but I think for what this cigar does is very very good it's not offensive to anybody at all I feel like Somebody that hasn't been smoking for an extremely long time can smoke this cigar and appreciate it. And of course, your aficionados and connoisseurs are obviously chasing after the cigar too because of the flavors I think it brings and just the nostalgia of being able to say you have a Bahike. You know, midway through the second, third, I'm gonna keep on smoking, but so far I'm really, really enjoying this cigar. It's been very good, definitely memorable. When I when anybody mentions a Bahike, I'll definitely be able to close my eyes or something, you know, and be able to picture and remember like the flavors that I had when I, I smoked this cigar. So I'm gonna keep on smoking, see if this thing improves or see what changes. So y'all hang tight, stay tuned, and uh, I'll catch you guys in the, in the last third. All right, into the last third now, right around an hour mark. I'll probably get around probably another 10, 15 minutes or so. So good burn time for pretty much like a, a Robusto Grand or Grande. Kind of, it's a little bit bigger. It's a 52 ring gauge, so it's a little bigger than the typical Robusto, but a little bit shorter too. Still got a great smoke time. Um, final notes on this one, it's about the same. Still got that really good milk chocolate. There's some wood notes in there and that black tea is still in the background. Very, very good. Burn, I just touched it up that one time. Burn has been going great since then. Thoroughly impressed with this cigar. Would I spend $700 for 10? Me personally, no. But um, if you have the disposable income and that's what you like doing, then man, can't really knock it, man. Some people don't agree with me buying 20 or $30 for drones. It is what it is. But at the end of the day, you know when you're buying a product. I I bought the Unicorn before by Dunbar uh, Tobacco and Trust, and that was a hundred dollar cigar. And I I like this more than that personally. I you know I think the Unicorn was a good cigar, but it, it's just all subjective, man. What whatever you know what you're comfortable with spending, what you're happy with. Very good cigar. I never would turn down any of these if I was given one of these. It also makes me interested to see with the bigger ring gauge of the 54 and the 56 how it changes the blend if it's better or for worse so but but this was very very good now as far as scoring i had a good friend of mine that he asked a really good question he was like man how do you score your uh cigars and actually another fellow reviewer mentioned it before in a previous video martina maya he also does very good uh cigar review videos too so if you're not following martin Follow his page, man, he's a uh, super solid guy. I think he's getting close to a thousand subscribers. So you guys go over there and watch his stuff, help get him up to a thousand as well too. Now, what I like to score my cigars on, personally, I look at uh, flavor, uh, burn, draw, complexity, and strength. That's what I'm gonna rate it on. And I'm gonna do mine on a scale of one being very bad to 20 being perfect or, or really good. And with those five categories, I'll have a total of 100 points. Now that I'm looking at this cigar, I gave the Bahike 52 on the flavor. I gave it a 19 out of 20. I gave the Burn a 17 out of 20. I gave the Draw a 19, the Complexity a 20, and the Strength a 15. So they gave me a total of 91 points. So a 91 out of 100, Elite Cigar excellent again you guys will see the only thing that I knocked it on a little bit was the strength again that's my preference some of you guys may smoke this and it may be perfect it might be a 95 or 96 to you still an elite cigar cannot thank you enough Don. thank you for sending this in he's also sending me some other things too for future reviews some cubans some more cubans and things like that so be on the lookout for that um shout out to all my perfectos out there too man great great group of people always interacting with each other it's it's like a family over there so with that being said, we're gonna give this a 91 out of 100. This will probably pair perfectly with a rum. I, I'm not even thinking about cognacs or whiskey or anything. I would love to see what this pairs with with the rum, especially with that sweetness and things like that. So, with that being said, I thoroughly enjoyed this Bahike 52. If you can find them, you already know what you're gonna spend for it. It's gonna be there's no such thing, and that's another thing about Cohib, uh, Cuban Cohibas and Bahikes. There's no such thing as a cheap Cohiba or Bahike. If you somebody comes to you and they're like, oh, I got this for $20, it's probably not a real Bahike, man. These things are gonna cost, or you know, as Don did, he gifted me one of them. So, with that being said, thank you guys again for tuning in to the video. I'm really appreciating it. We're on that road to 1K. We're getting there slowly but surely. You guys take care out there. Y'all remember to be driven, never motivated. And y'all know the name of the game, relaxation and motivation. We'll catch y'all on the next one.